Lisa Te Iwi U, is the Chief Executive of Te Ohu Kai Moana. He has a broad experience working in the natural resource sector and has held various roles across policy research and management. Lisa is the former chair of Te Wai Māori Trust and as mentioned, she is the current chief executive of Te Ohu Kai Moana. Both of these roles where she was the first wahine in both of these positions. This lady has uh, paddled down the length of the Ganges River. She's attempted to sail across the ocean and had to get plucked out of it when, they, uh, when it got really bad. That's what happens when you go on a bamboo raft in the middle of the ocean. Um, but a formidable leader and, and, a, and a wahine that I'm really proud to uh, say that I have the privilege of working alongside. Nō rere e te oingo, mai te paki paki, Lisa te iu iu. Tēnā koe, pā hia, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, ai, ko Lisa te heu heu tō koe ngoa, um, hi uri a hau o te whare tapu o ngā pohi, uh, me kafia moana, kafia kai, kafia tangata, tēnā tātou. And um, I'm a mokopuna first and foremost um, that strives to implement the whakaro and aspirations of her tūpuna in my day job. I'm the chief executive of Te Ohu Kai Moana. <laughs> As all of us know, um, as kaitiaki, the roles that we play um, every day are actually an extension of uh, the whakapapa that we carry. Um, but I want to talk to you about uh, the journey of Te Ohu Kai Moana, and I've been the chief executive in this role for the last uh, two years, actually. Just want to mahi to my team who are here. Um, and nothing I will say today is nothing that I've already told you, so that's always a good thing. Um, but uh, Te Ohu's on a journey. And so for those of you who know Te Ohu Kai Moana, we uh, were established as part of the deed of settlement. We are 30 years old. We were the first settlement that brought together collective iwi, so we are in service to 58 iwi um, in the settlement and will look after their fisheries assets. So the original part of Te Ohu Kai Moana was to receive those assets in partnership with the Crown, but allocate those resources out to the iwi and subsequently uh, think about how we protect the interests of that settlement, both from a fisheries management aspect, but also how do we give effect to their aspirations more broadly in the moana. And 30 years on, 95, 96% of those assets are out the door, te ohu kai moana are redefining themselves in service to iwi. And it's, it's a challenging journey. So for those of you that have um, experienced settlement but are also trying to reimagine yourselves without the construct um, of colonisation, without the construct of legislation, but actually truly listening to the aspiration and insights of your people. So I want to mihi to ite mare kura teina, because that kōrero is absolutely resonating with where Te Ohu Kai Moana want to go. And so for us, uh, we challenged ourselves uh, last year, we reimagined what our strategy could be, and we came up with a vision, uh, Tautoko with the board, and Pa here is on our board. So, um, and I uh, just also want to mihi to uh, Ta Mark Solomon, who is on our board, and we miss you dearly. So got some kōrero to have with you after. Um, but the journey that we've gone is we've challenged ourselves with a vision which is thriving whānau determining their relationship with tangaroa. So there's two very important aspects to think about in that. Is one, te ohu kaimwana is basically challenging itself to empower iwi to therefore determine how they raise capacity and capability not only of themselves but in the whānau and the hapu that they serve. And actually truly trying to uplift mana motuhake. And at the same time, defining their relationship with tangaroa. So te ohu is not in the business of 
trying to force a particular pathway, we are here in service to you and what it looks like to redefine your cultural connection to the moana that really matters to you. I think the challenging part that we've got is that we are in a mindset change. And so for 30 years, if you've behaved and acted in a particular way, it becomes an expectation. So the next few years of our delivery is about being uh, deliberate. We'll start to sound different. We'll start to look different. And the things that we say and do will actually start to feel different out there in, in the world. Um, and that's an incremental process. But what we know is that if we don't give effect to the most natural instinct, those sensing, that sensing kōrero that uh, Itimare Kuratena talked about, then we're failing to do our job in service to iwi. Um, you've seen some of our earlier kōrero around Te Hao Tangaro, Kaurai Tawa, which was the breath of Tangaro sustaining us, and we created some first iterations around understanding our role. Um, around tiaki, whakapapa, kai, hauhake. What we are now in a phase of is how does te hao tangaro reimagine into a natural instinct for what Māori want to achieve with their moana. The one thing that we are uh, truly committed to as tiohu is that we're about encouraging self-responsibility. So we will never take that away from iwi, hapu and Fano. Our job should be to make sure that you have the tools and the ability to express that yourselves. And we have a critical role in, in helping that, that come to fruition. I think one of, um, we were really lucky last week, we had uh, our workshop with our 58 iwi and we, we actually talked about what it would look like to dive deeper, and we had a 30-year celebration uh, last year. The theme for that celebration was Roku Tohora, which was the expression of taking the deeper dive, to go deeper than we ever, ever have before and come to the surface with a new look and feel and a reimagining. But what that requires from us, um, and I'm talking about the 58 iwi, because first and foremost, I believe in mana motu hake as a kaitiaki and as an expression of my tūpuna, and this is coming through te ohu kaimwana. In effect, um, we're just really holding space for iwi to take their moment. And so the determination of iwi, the mana motu hake, is something that we're actually really passionate about. Um, now that's a different kōrero that te ohu kaimwana has ever had before. Um, we've got great relationships uh, with Iwi Cheers. We've never had that before. So it's a new time and it's a new new wave. And I'm excited about the mahi that's happened within Sustainable Seas to think about bringing some of that research and the whakaro that you have reimagined in our relationship with the ocean, not only from a science perspective, but how communities interact and actually see themselves in those local places and spaces. So that's my kōrero. Um, don't ask me any questions afterwards. Kia ora.